Hello, kia ora, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you very much for joining us for our top 10 global weather extremes for Monday, the final Monday of September. And number one, we're kicking off with Hurricane Sam out here in the Atlantic Ocean. A severe storm, this one, category four now. So it's certainly ramped up a lot. Now, it looks ominous as it gets closer and closer to the island nations in the Caribbean. You can sort of see the easterly flow. Looks as though it's guiding it directly in there. However, the guiding forces of nature look as though it's going to push it further northwards. And in fact, places like Bermuda may have to keep a closer eye on it than those further south. Here's the latest tracking from the National Hurricane Center. It doesn't look a lot different to last week, although here is the change. We saw that storm kind of easing a wee bit here, maybe sort of falling apart a little bit. That doesn't look so likely in the latest update. In fact, it keeps it with the M, which stands for Major Hurricane, which is what it is right now, all the way through here and as it heads towards Bermuda. So those in Bermuda should be paying close attention to this storm, as should those in Guadalupe and Puerto Rico. I think those areas and everyone in between should keep a very close eye on this storm. Uh, this is New Zealand time, so one o'clock on Tuesday, one o'clock in the morning, will be around about you know the middle of the day for Monday, in America and for this side of the uh, Caribbean. So we're certainly looking at a major storm, category three, Bermuda is right here. So I think Bermuda needs to pay very close attention to this storm in the coming days and any nation just in this zone right here. Okay, number two takes us over into the Western Pacific. We've got a even bigger storm over here, this typhoon out at sea. We talked about this the other day as it left Guam for the open waters of the Western Pacific. So this is a breeding ground for the world's largest storms. And this one is certainly one of those as it gets closer to the islands of Japan. So I think Japan is going to be the one most exposed to this storm. Uh, Typhoon Mindil, this again, New Zealand time. This will be putting it in towards later tonight, um, later Monday for the places on the map that you can see right now. 200 kilometers an hour gusting to 250. That's, uh, you know, well over 120 miles an hour sustained. So this is a major storm, but it's out at sea. So that's the good news. So for ships, it's more of a problem, but it could curve around, gets close to, to uh, Tokyo as we get in towards uh, later po the po later portion of this week. So certainly one to keep an eye on. Moving on to the next storm now, number three takes us to India, where we've got another tropical cyclone moving through at the moment. It's already made landfall. And so now, as you can see with all the thunderstorms, Rain is going to be the main problem with this storm. Locally, very strong winds just around the center of it, but when you go further afield, the winds aren't so much of a problem. So rainfall is going to be the issue. So you can see here, it was category one. It's now a tropical cyclone or a tropical storm as it loses its category status. And Gulab, as it's named, moves further through the inland portion of India and dumps a lot of rain. So everywhere around this zone here has a flood risk. Mumbai, probably too far out to the west to be too seriously impacted by it. But here is the rainfall for the next 24 hours moving across here. You might also notice though over in Mumbai, the, the rain clouds start to the west and move in. You see there they meet. That's because of the afternoon thunderstorms, the usual sort of downpours bubbling up over there, moving inland and then meeting with the tropical storm that's falling apart. So some heavy rain and flood risks for India over the next 24 hours. One last map to show you, I wanna compare the two major tropical storms because I said to you the other day how typhoons, they grow much bigger than the Atlantic storms. So here is the typhoon, here is the North Pole. So we're looking straight down from the top of the North Pole. Over here is the Western Pacific and the typhoon, and over here is the Atlantic and Hurricane Sam. So Sam looks like a little baby compared to the typhoon in the Western Pacific, and yet that's a category four tropical storm at the moment, category four hurricane. So it does show you just how much more powerful those typhoons really can be. So number four on our list, we're moving away from the tropics and back up to the colder weather of Alaska. And we've got those two low pressure systems, double trouble, uh, hugging the Canadian coastline and also the American coastline and also parts of Eastern Russia. So those two systems are driving in a fair bit of rain and we're seeing that rain come down into Vancouver, British Columbia, obviously falling as snow up in the mountains and also getting uh, heavy rain coming into parts of Seattle and down towards Portland. Those areas 
We'll be welcoming the rain, normally a very wet part of America, but lately Oregon and Washington state haven't really been seeing a huge amount of rain. So this will be very welcome for those areas. Number five on our list, also keeping us up into northern areas, we're back again to Iceland and also to the United Kingdom and Ireland where we've got a large area of low pressure. The other day it was two lows, now it's combined into one, although it does have a sort of secondary center just here to the northern coastline of Iceland. 100 km an hour winds, 60 miles an hour sustained straight off Greenland. So that is a cold wind and then that cold wind curves around into Ireland, Scotland and parts of England. So colder weather with a bit of rain falling there as well as you can see a lot of that will be falling as snow, but rain falls across the United Kingdom and Ireland, also into France and Germany, Luxembourg, Belgium and Norway and Denmark. So we've got a fair bit of wet weather coming through. You get the feeling that, um, yeah, summer's definitely over now. Moving along now to number six. And uh, well, we we're talking about summer. This is the hot weather going on at the moment. Mauritania has got temperatures up into the mid 40s Celsius this week or 110 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So very hot weather pushing into the Western Sahara as well. Although the very coastal area is not quite so bad. It's those inland areas in Algeria and Mali also experiencing those 40 plus degree temperatures at the moment. At the other end of the scale, we go back to Alaska and the Yukon in Canada, these are the two coldest parts of North America at the moment. The blue indicating single digit temperatures Celsius. So Anchorage here in Alaska only got highs around about seven or eight degrees uh, Celsius. And that's only getting you up into around the low 40s Fahrenheit. So pretty cold weather. And that cold weather goes into parts of British Columbia and down here around Vancouver up towards sort of Whistler and Nanaimo. Uh, those areas are certainly looking a little bit colder at the moment. Number eight on our list today takes us to the largest zone of high pressure in the Northern Hemisphere. That's it up here in Russia, keeping conditions pretty settled over a large portion of Russia. And then in the Southern Hemisphere, the largest zone of high pressure, taking us to number nine, is between South America and South Africa. This is a huge area of high pressure, by far the biggest zone in the Southern Hemisphere. At around about 1038 hectopascals, it's sort of bubbling away in that zone at the moment, and it reaches all the way back to Buenos Aires and on the other side, all the way to Cape Town. So that is a big, area of high pressure. And our final map, number 10 today, is Australia, where we've got a bit of change coming along at the moment. Uh, the dry continent, obviously lots of desert zone in here, uh, but at the moment, a couple of big low pressure zones coming through, and that's going to impact their weather. Spring is certainly with Australia at the moment, and the lower half of the country, sort of from about that line southwards, is pretty unsettled at the moment. So that affects Perth, Adelaide, uh, Melbourne, Hobart, and Sydney. Brisbane further to the north up here, not quite so impacted, but they've had some spring ups and downs as well lately with the temperatures up around 30 degrees Celsius the other week and then down to 18 degrees. So that's a bit of a chop and change. That is all from me. That's the top 10 around the country. And our final image to leave you with today is going back to Alaska and parts of uh, British Columbia with the two lows, but this is making a big smiley face. I think you can see it. Two eyes, nose, and a big mouth smiling down there just north of Hawaii. So there's a nice positive image to end on for today. We'll be back again on Wednesday with our final global update for this month for September. So we see you again on Wednesday around the world with our top 10 global weather extremes.